three sections, response, recovery and contacts. There's basically a, a, an emergency flow chart, which you can edit and change. Pretty much everything in here is editable. This is a set of steps for people to start their initial response. It tells them what to do and how to stay safe. It also tells managers what to do to make sure their people stay safe. It gives you an escalation picture that says if someone discovers something, this is how you make that news reach initially um, someone in charge of incidents. And then after that, the crisis team or the senior management team or leadership team. And from there, uh, other appropriate actions can be taken. It's got names and numbers. These are all blanked out. They're examples only. So just these would be your the person who takes control or people that take control and then an escalation sequence with all the phone numbers. So it gets things moving. The next thing is when something happens, quite often there's a way that you can react and close down that incident so that it, it stops being an incident. So it's really important not just to escalate and assume you're going to have to recover. So you need to have some kind of simple agreed response to different types of incident if they occur. And that's what this section is. There's no limit to how many you put in here, but these basically are, are responses to the risks you face. So what we should do is go through each of them and make sure we know what to do. Very simple terms, uh, quite straightforward, a little bit of impact and likelihood. So this doubles pretty much as a risk register in some ways. Risks you face, how much they hurt and how often they happen. So the table serves a lot of purposes. Other practical material, if you get locked out of your building, where to go? Different assembly points because most people assemble in their car park. If the car park's busy, no one knows where to go. So we put some others in. Where to meet. So if there's a command centre, if your senior team need to meet somewhere, again, they probably all want to go to the same place, although potentially you'll use Teams now or something like that or Zoom. So this is an optional thing. But there you go, Skype meeting room it had in here for this one. You have the idea of roles. You can see here they're, they're filled out underneath, but you assign each role to a person as the default. So you've got some names in here. So if something happens, these are the first people to get given those roles. If that person's not available or is doing something else, you can give it to somebody else because the role is defined here. So provided that whoever gets it performs the role, uh, it should all continue to work OK. So each role is made of a name. It's got some competencies, what you're good at. It then says, if you're given this role, when you're doing it, these are the things you should be trying to achieve, the goals of the role. And over here, you've got the tasks, some checklist tasks. It won't be all of them, but it'll be some material checklist tasks that you would probably expect to do in most circumstances. Not every time, because obviously circumstances are different. And you can see we've got different roles defined in here. And I think it'll let you define quite a few of those. Just moving on to recovery. First thing, recovery is split into two pieces. One is crisis management and the other is operational recovery. So if I look at crisis management first, this simple template, I mean, you can probably use this as it is or you can edit it. Uh, but it, what it does is it makes you think through all the information that you might need to make decisions. And by writing it down like this, you can run through it again and update things as they change and therefore make consistent decisions. Also, if someone asks you what's going on, you can give them a picture that's appropriate to who they are and what they need based on the same consistent information. Uh, it prescribes a communications protocol, if you like. Uh, and the reason for that is if people cut other people out of the loop, you end up doing things that other people aren't expecting. So quite an important thing. And it just tells you who talks to who about what and why. So strategies are, are the meat of this whole plan. So this is really what I would do. If something happened to my business, I want to know if I met the chairman uh, just in passing in the corridor and he said, what are we doing if we lose access to the site? I would want to be able to tell him in very few words, 
probably a minute or 30 seconds and I want to know what the, the main building blocks of that response are and when I've finished saying those things he should go yeah that's good uh, I can see that would work um, three parts to that are well four parts the name the scenario name on the left a description of what it means if we say what what in, what amounts to a denial of access that's what I'm trying to say and if we get denied access how are we actually going to recover from that you know if we were locked out for two weeks or whatever it might be and we can say what we would do but you'll examine that carefully and you'll find that there are some things that you needed to do beforehand to prevent any showstoppers prevent anything stopping those things in recovery taking place so we we also write a list of resilience points things that we must have in place to make this work and that works pretty well in that right hand column where it says planned what we should write in there i don't know why it's got a gap but that's the deadline by which we would expect to have acceptable business operating and i'm guessing that's probably something like 24 or 48 hours and it's the same for different scenarios so you can write a lot of scenarios if there's a lot of things that affect you so that that's that's a very important piece of all of this then it starts to break down uh, the business according to areas of recovery so if you think of the business or the organization like a layer cake and it's got all these layers of you can see two of them there customers and products it's also got processes so the activities um, IT services and applications it's got infrastructure supply chain resources things like this and to run normally you need all of those layers to be mostly intact so what we do is we look at the things in the layers and we look at how they work uh, what they rely on how long we can cope without each one and how how it will be brought back uh, so if i go down there's not so much of that in customers because obviously you don't recover a, a customer in quite the sense that you might recover an activity so if i go down to these products and activities you can see each one of our products will have a recovery plan of some sort these are very thin here they're just written to show you where it goes they have a planned recovery time but the important one is this latest in other words if we don't recover this particular product portal one within three days that becomes an existential threat for the organization so whereas the latest is three days we're going to plan to bring it back after just one day because that gives us a safety margin and it explains why and it says who's responsible and it goes through each of the layers like this so we have these little micro plans bringing back each part of the organization in an acceptable time and there's a reason and an owner once you've done that for all of the main categories layers in the organization if you've done them all in time you should recover acceptably and that's the point so it is just like a project plan provided you put the links in place in the right way it will recover in time some spin-offs out of that one of them is work areas well if we all get kicked out of um the building out of the site where can they go well in most cases now most people are able to work from home so this is almost obsolete now but it's not always the case particularly if you're production or warehouse or something that actually requires uh, fabrication distribution you still need a, a center to do it from and we need to know where people will go to do it so this is a, a material part of the solution where do we put each of these activities so it's done by function by activity and where it goes to get completed and how many people will go there but also we probably need to know what happens down through systems equipment and resources so these are all the same their action plans to get it back how do I restore suppliers which ones and how fast so what you've actually got in that section is a mixture of an impact analysis that says how much it hurts and therefore how fast must we act and also um, a recovery plan because as well as telling you how fast you need to do it it also tells you how to do it so it's quite a, a comprehensive thing for a, a small and very concise document 
you can see we're only on page 17. Um, OK, if we'd written a bit more in those sections, we might be up to 20 or 25, but it's still fairly concise. The last thing in here is a, more of a directory. So the directory means you only really write all of the data once. So it means it's easier to keep up to date. You can see employees and staff, suppliers and customers. Uh, and that really is, that's what, what goes into a plan. Um, this is a very, very short demo, but you, you get the idea of, of how compact it is. So that was micro.